Hi, Grace. Thanks for joining Hi. me this afternoon. Um, can you introduce yourself and tell me a little bit about your involvement with the creative arts? Yeah, um, so I'm Grace Murray. Um, and in, I think it was July uh, this year, so in lockdown, um, I started my own little art business uh, called Grace Alice Art. And um, I predominantly have been doing like pet portraits and like nice little watercolors um, for people and selling them. Um, but I've done, um, I did my A-levels in art. So in that I kind of based my work around like big oil paintings. Um, so I, I love all of um, like the full aspect of art and I like experimenting with lots of different mediums as well. Brilliant. So this sounds like um, something that you've always done, always been involved in, in art since you were young. Do you, you come from a creative background? Yeah, very creative background. Uh, my mum was, so my parents were both police, uh, police officers um, when I was growing up, um, but my mum left and um, set up her own soft furnishings business called Pins and Ribbons. Um, so I was completely like inspired by her and, and my dad draws a lot as well. So he's like drawn up plans for our extensions and, and is always drawing. Um, so I was completely inspired by them from a very early age. And also being in that environment, like in my mum's workshop all the time. And um, like I had my own little sewing machine. So from being like very young, um, I've always, loved um loved art and then I took it for GCSE and I did theatre crafts um so it was very like textiles I, I loved that um but kind of wanted to focus more on like fine art so I took that for A-level um and yeah I've been painting ever since. <laughs> That's absolutely brilliant That's quite a career change for, for your mum. Um, yeah well she's a yoga teacher now so um she left uh soft furnishings and then I'm in the yoga studio now so we have a little yoga studio in our garden um and the top room I kind of use for all of my art um so as a little art studio so yeah that's really nice terrific I think that's wonderful and I think it's just brilliant that um you know you've been inspired by your parents into your own creativity yeah it's really lovely we are in these interviews seeing quite a generational divide. People are kind of my age whose parents said, no, you've got to do all the sensible subjects and entirely discouraged um, uh, from being involved in the arts and have kind of what made our way back to it. A lot of us like kind of post kids um, had a chance to rethink. Um, uh, but yeah, it's been brilliant to see how supportive parents of all kinds of backgrounds have been uh, for the younger generation to get involved in the arts or even to try and make a career in the arts. Um, so I'm really excited about that. <laughs> so um, how do you work? Do you, do you like, do you have social media? Is that how, you, how do you get your commissions and that kind of thing? Um, so it started with, um, I think I painted, I painted a portrait of one of my mum's um, yoga students, one of her dogs. Um, just as a little present um, that my mum wanted to give her and so my mum asked me to do that and then she then told the yoga class so the student then told the rest of the yoga class and then suddenly lots of yoga students wanted pet portraits um, and I never had an Instagram for my I had an Instagram for my art like through A-levels kind of like just for me it wasn't kind of for anyone else to see really um, but then as I started doing more and more I set up a little Facebook um and yeah it kind of just um went from there um and yeah people usually contact me through Facebook um I'm quite I'm quite fortunate that like quite a lot of my mum's yoga students really in, enjoy like engaging with it so I feel like a lot of the engagement does come from like that sort of group um which is brilliant um and then yeah Christmas has been so busy with commissions which I'm really grateful for but yeah, it's a bit manic at the moment um but yeah I'm really enjoying it and it's just it's quite in I find it quite easy to kind of get into it because I think like with my mum she's obviously from another generation so like social she didn't grow up with social media where I've sort of grown up with social media so I kind of like know how it works to some extent obviously it's different um being a business but but yeah I'm quite fortunate in that aspect I think Terrific. So sounds like lockdown hasn't um, stopped your work at all. I presume working with animals that you work off 
photos rather than oh yeah it would be a nightmare trying to do um yeah a guy I wouldn't be able to do that <laughs> yeah I think it's a uh, hard enough to uh get people to um <laughs> sit and pose yeah. but um brilliant so are, have you got any plans for any further study or is your business kind of going well enough now and that's what you're going to focus on um, well, I'm at university as well, so I, I attend the University of Leeds, um, so I do an international relations degree um, there, so I'm in my second year, um, and I, I did kind of want to go and study art at university, but in A-levels, I kind of, I didn't really enjoy writing about it, or like the academic side of it, I, it completely put me off, and it made me not want to like go to lessons, which yeah I, I really didn't really connect with that side of it um so I thought there's no point doing an art degree because I've just I'll completely lose my love for art um so I thought I'd do a politics degree just because it's quite general and I do like academia and learning new things um so I've done that but it runs quite nicely alongside of it and especially because I haven't been on campus at all uh, this year um, I haven't been on campus since February, March time. Um, so this has worked really well because it's kept me focused and it's something that I enjoy doing rather than just like sit waiting to find out when I can next go on campus. Um, and I can also do this at Leeds as well. So even though I spent a lot of time at home, obviously in lockdown and um, throughout the term, if I do go back to Leeds, I can very easily like set it up there as well. Um, so it's quite nice in that aspect. Yeah, no, really hard time to be a student right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, do, how, how, how is your learning? Do you have any group learning or is it really mainly independent study now? It's, it's, very, um, it's very independent, um, which I, I am a very independent person and I like just cracking on with something and kind of doing it myself. Um, but just the kind of community like isn't there at all um like last year in Leeds you'd go into uni and then if you like as soon as you left that class you kind of could close your book and get on with other stuff where I found it really difficult in lockdown and even now still to kind of like know when to stop um I am a bit of a workaholic so like yeah I do find it really tough um in that aspect but I think it's just something that we're going to have to cope with and adapt to and I'm not sure when it's going when we're going to be able to go back um but yeah we're just going to cope with it for the time being yeah absolutely I think um uh it seems that people that are involved with the arts have adapted a lot better to lockdown than many people um, yeah perhaps because we've always uh seeing the world is a little bit uncertain mm -hmm. um you know yeah. when you're like trying to you know make a living through the creative arts you never know when uh, when the next commission is going to come in um but i hope it does get back to um at least university gets back to normal yeah, thank you there's a lot in the world that could do with a bit of a shake up but um yeah it's a real shame you've not been able to study on campus so quite interested because obviously you're quite young. Um, do you have any long term plans where ideally where do you like to see yourself in like five, 10 years down the line? Um, well, I'm 20 now. Um, and that's really I'm, young. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it doesn't seem it, but I know it is young. Um, yeah, I'm I kind of want to do everything like this is it's 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 a good thing but I can also see it as like a limitation because uh, I just get overwhelmed by everything but I do want to do everything um I'm applying this this morning I sent off my application to study abroad um next year so I'm applying to go to Australia Singapore um lots of different countries um with the intention of living abroad when I'm older so maybe that might happen in the next five years um but yeah, I'm quite an adaptable person. So I feel like wherever I am in the world, I'll continue to paint and I'll continue to kind of be creative, whatever that may be. Um, and I'm open to anything as well. Like I love like the idea of like pottery or like anything creative I absolutely love. So 
um I think I'll definitely like keep that up and always either have that as like um a small business on the side that I can always come back to um or even like make it um like a main um career goal um but yeah I'm kind of an easygoing person I just kind of go along with <laughs> along with it or I have so far so yeah I see myself living abroad and definitely still being creative Brilliant. Yeah. I mean, I have to say, I've just bambled through my entire life, sort of say, <laughs> just been really interested in so many, so many things. And, um, and yeah, just generally enjoying myself. And uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm amazed that I actually I seem to have plans these days. Um, well, centered around the creative arts in Teesside, really. Um, so uh, it's been great to finally get to the stage in my life where I kind of know what I'm doing and what my purpose is, but I have really enjoyed just bambling around my whole life and just taking every opportunity. I'm, I'm really bad at um, saying yes to everything and then finding out later what I've agreed to. Um, but it served me pretty well, I have to say. Good. So you say um, whatever happens, you think you'll carry on being creative. Why is that like, like making money or, you know, having a, a kind of project aside why do you do art what is it that gives you in itself and what role do you think it plays in society um so I think personally I like art because um you can completely dictate like what the outcome of that piece is um and I just really like that that it's whatever you choose to do kind of create something that like hasn't really been created before um and is original um so I love that kind of idea of it and I kind of I just love the process of coming away from something that could be like stressful or like work or uni work and just coming in here and just like sitting down putting some nice music on and just like taking as much time as I need to kind of de-stress um I find it just really therapeutic um and I actually did my um, you can do an EPQ at school, which is like an extra A level, um, and it's like a research project. So I did mine on the creative, um, like the importance of creative arts in schools and in education, um, and that also kind of like taught me, like it. I considered stuff that I hadn't considered before, but it kind of went along the route of how people need to be able to express themselves from a from an early age, and I think we kind of are taught in schools that it's it is just a hobby and it's an add-on and it's not a core subject so you have to do your math science and English um which I hated maths and science um and then you can do art if you're good at those things if you have like an extra free or if it, it, it is just an add-on and I can't stand that idea and the fact that it's being cut in creative um like creative subjects are being cut in schools as well I just think I've seen the effects on, it's had on me throughout school and the effect it's had on my friends. And it is just so sad that we are going down that route as a society. Um, but stuff like this and independent projects will hopefully boost it back up. But I think it just, it should be, it should be treated as a job and as a career rather than like just an add on. Um, because so many people like, I feel so many people ha feel like they have to go down like a more academic route. I don't know if I felt like that subconsciously and that's why I am doing an academic degree at uni. Um, I'm yet to find that out. But yeah, I think it is detrimental. Absolutely. This idea that it's something that you do as a hobby in your spare time at your own expense. Which I guess it is for some people, but then for others, it is their full career and their lives and for that to be belittled into like just something that you do in a night time is yeah it's really not good yeah I mean anyone who just is doing art for for their own sake and as you say it's really interesting what you're saying about that idea of control like it's something that like whatever's going on out there at the moment we have so little control over but we can control our own artistic output and that really interesting uh point to make um but yeah, I hate that it's so devalued and it's just, it just seems to be, um, it's just because people don't think about it. Like the statistics of, like the moment, not, not that I'm dissing the fishing industry, but there's 24,000 people employed in the fishing industry and there's over 2 million people 
in the UK that are employed in creative industries. Like it's massive. It's bigger yeah. than agriculture. You know, it's bigger than aviation, automobile industry, and automation combined. And I just think that there's an absolute uh, lack of cognition of this in in amongst artists themselves, let alone in in, in wider society. Yeah, definitely. Well, art is everywhere. It's in like the design of our houses. It's in it's literally everywhere, like old posters that you see on the streets, movies that we all watch, adverts, television, like we're all so subjected to art, but few people realise, like can put the, the, connect the dots together and realise that it is the creative people um, that produce all of this. Brilliant. Well, I think it's uh, strong young voices like yourself that can really make a difference here. Um, so. Brilliant to talk to you. Yes, thank you. Uh, and when all this is over, hopefully we can all get together. I'm planning on a, hopefully a big party down at the auxiliary for all of the interviewees at some oh, point. I don't know what to see. Um, but um, whenever it is, I look forward to um, meeting you out there in the real world. Yes, I look forward to it as well. Take care. Thank you. Bye.